This is Khan's clinic on malaria. To start off, malaria is a parasitic infection caused by the protist in the genus Plasmodium. These protists are unicellular and feed on hemoglobin, the protein that makes up red blood cells. This protein's job is to move oxygen around the body. Over 200 of these Plasmodium species exist, but luckily for us, only 4 of them are able to infect humans, with the Falciparium species being the most severe. Because Plasmodia feed on red blood cells, their major transmission factor is blood. This means that sharing any used needles or getting a blood transfusion from anyone infected with malaria will likely result in you contracting it as well. Mothers can pass down malaria to their unborn children as they share the same blood. But the most common method that malaria uses to spread is through insects. The main culprit here is the female Anopheles mosquito, because unlike their male counterparts, they are able to suck blood. Once the plasmodia enter their human host, the blood moves them into the liver. They remain in the liver for around a week, depending on their species, although some species are known to lie dormant for years. As they mature, the parasitic cells grow, creating large cells with thousands of nuclei. When it is ready, the cell will divide into an equal number of merozoites, all of which will be released into the bloodstream on the hunt for hemoglobin. They will find and attach to their own red blood cell, where they will form a distinctive ring structure. Once again, the protist will divide its nuclei, but unlike the liver stage, each cell will only produce 16 to 18 nuclei. Then at once, every merozite from the liver that has infected a red blood cell will burst its host cell and release brand new merozites, and from there, the cycle will continue. Infection, replication, and destruction. The time that it takes to infect a red blood cell is two to three days. Once the third day is up and the blood cells pop, the person will begin to show signs of infection. High fever, chills, and sweating will begin, and it may be accompanied by headache, body pains, anemia, and vomiting. There are several options for diagnosing malaria, and all of them require blood testing. The most common test is a blood smear. Here, the patient's blood will be smeared onto a microscope slide, and dye will be added to stain the parasite. Each species will have a different look, but they will all follow the same reproductive stages and will be easily identified as some type of malaria. A faster diagnostic option is the rapid diagnostic test for malaria. This test does not require a microscope, instead it relies on the parasites in the blood to react with specific chemicals found on the test strips. Depending on the species, a certain amount of bands will show up. However, this test is limited in the way that it can only distinctively analyze the Falciparium species, and may read negative if protist concentration is low. The final test is the polymerase chain reaction. The goal of a PCR is to analyze the DNA of the plasmodium. The DNA will separate by size, creating distinctive bands, which can be compared to a known sample to form a definitive diagnosis. Treatment of malaria is fairly straightforward. A patient will be prescribed one of the antiparasitic medications used to combat malaria. The medication that is given depends on a few factors, like age, severity of infection, pregnancy, and the species that is infected. If malaria is not treated, it can become a huge threat to the body. The lungs could begin to fill with fluid, severe anemia can deprive the organs of oxygen, and some species can cause low blood sugar. One of the more dangerous complications is the presence of malaria in the brain. Red blood cells traveling to the brain that are infected with malaria can become stuck within the small capillaries. Now that the blood is cut off to the brain, it can become starved of oxygen and swell. Another problematic complication is organ failure. The major blood filtering organs like the liver, spleen, and kidneys can become overwhelmed by the parasite and will eventually shut down, resulting in a domino effect leading to total organ failure and death. To prevent a malaria infection, avoid going to tropical countries where the risk of contracting malaria is greater. Use bug spray, wear long sleeves and pants to keep mosquitoes off of you, and use netting to block mosquitoes from entering interior areas. 
In conclusion, mosquitoes won't thank you for giving them a nice meal. Instead, they'll just leave you with some unwanted guests. And that's all I have for malaria. Feel free to check out my other social media platforms, or check out my previous videos, which will be located down in the description. If you have a suggestion for a future video, leave that down in the comments. And if you want to be featured in one of these videos, either leave it in the comments or message me directly, and we can set something up. But until next time, stay healthy and be safe.